right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to worship at Well of Hope ELCA in Castle Rock, Colorado. Thank you for joining us both online and in person. We are so glad to have you worship with us today. And um, a very special welcome to guests and visitors that um, are joining us this morning. If you are worshiping online, uh, please say hello in the chat. Karen Nilsson is our online greeter this morning. And today we are welcoming Pastor Dave Risendahl to worship with us. Uh, Pastor Dave is our new bridge pastor and will be with us for the next several months. So we're so happy to have you with us. Thank you. Um, a note about restrooms. Uh, there are restrooms located in the back of this room as well as around the building. Um, so just feel free to get up and use those. Um, we are doing children's church today. Uh, so like usual, children of all ages are invited to attend children's church after the children's message and children's church will happen in this side room over here. Bible study is resuming this week and we'll meet on Wednesday at 1215 on both Zoom and at Christ Episcopal. Um, Pastor Dave, do you have anything that you would like to say about that or? It's gonna be fantastic, you should come. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been doing a, a Wednesday midday Bible study for about 30 years, and it's one of the favorite parts of my week. If you can come and join us, we would love to have you do that. It'll give me a chance to get to know you a little bit better. I always get to know that group first. Um, and we'll, I guess we're also going to be doing that online. If mm -hmm. you just can take a little break yeah. from work or where you are, we would love to have you involved. Each, each Wednesday, we'll take a look at the gospel lesson that's appointed for the coming Sunday and kind of get ourselves all ready for the coming worship service. Great. Um, so another announcement, we are really needing people to help with worship. Uh, so many hands come together to make worship happen on Sunday mornings, and we really couldn't do it without the help of all of you. So um, please consider um, signing up to help with worship on Sunday mornings. We need readers, assisting ministers, offering counters, and more. Um, and so I have a sign-up sheet here through March, and I'm just going to set it on this back table here where all the sound audio is set up. And before you leave today, please take a look at this, look at the dates and roles that we need, and please consider signing up. That would really help us out a lot. Um, do we have any more announcements? No, all right, well then let us quiet our hearts and minds and we will be begin with our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of God, let us confess our sin. Holy One, we confess that we are bound by sin and cannot free ourselves. Our hearts have turned away from you. We have not loved as you love. Forgive us so that we may be reconciled to you and to one another. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Please rise in body or spirit for our gathering song, Baptized and Set Free. We are 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our redeemer, by your spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated and invite any of the kids who are with us this morning to come on up for our time with the children. Do you ever go swimming? Yeah. Yeah, what else do you use water? Wash your hands. When you wash your hands, you use water. When you need a drink, you might drink water. We use water all the time. Water's really important. And today we're talking about a Bible character who used water. His name was John the Baptist. And he baptized people with water. He would put people into the water and take them back out, and that showed that they wanted to follow God. But John knew someone even better than him was coming. Someone who God chose to baptize people, not with just water, but with water and with God's words. Who do you think that even better person might have been? It was Jesus. Jesus came to baptize people with water and with God's words. And when my knees are wet, sorry. And when I was baptized, and when you were baptized, and when you were baptized, and when all of us were baptized with water and with God's words, God picked you to be part of God's special family. And so whenever you see water, when you're washing your hands, or when you're taking a drink, or when you're having a bath, you can remember that God chose you and God loves you. Hold your hands and pray with me. I'll pray the words and you pray them back to God. Dear God, Dear God, God thank you, thank thank you. For, choosing me for choosing me in baptism. In baptism. Help me remember. My baptism, my baptism, every day, every day. Amen. Amen. All right, if you want to come over to this other room with me, we're going to talk a little bit more about that water thing. Good morning. Good morning. The first
first reading today is from 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for our gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Please be seated. And dear friends at Well of Hope Lutheran Church, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm reminded this morning of a very old story uh, of a pastor who was joining a church on his first Sunday after the pa congregation's prior pastor had left. Does that sound a little bit familiar to you? <laughs> <clears throat> and he was trying to explain his role to the congregation and said to them, you know, he says, I'm like, well, it's like if you break a window when the hardware store is closed and you go and find an old piece of cardboard and tape it over the window until the hardware store opens and then you can go buy a whole new pane. He says, well, I'm kind of like that piece of cardboard. I'm just going to fill in until we get a whole new pane that fits right for you. And after service, someone came out and greeted the pastor and said, Pastor, you know, I, I don't think of you as an old piece of cardboard. I think of you as a whole new pain. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you think of me as an old piece of cardboard or a whole new pain, but I want to say I'm really excited to be here with you, and I'm really looking forward to these next 
few weeks together. If you look at the biography in the back of the worship folder this morning, you'll learn that I served five congregations since I was ordained in 1984. But the one that really captured my heart was in Phoenix when I had an opportunity to start a new ministry and spent 10 years at that congregation. I had the most extraordinary experiences. It was one of the most meaningful ministries I've had, and I'm really looking forward to, to having a few experiences just like that with you in these coming months. I, <clears throat> I probably also should say before I begin today that uh, before she left your congregation, your pastor, who's an old friend of mine, sent me a letter. And in the letter, she made three things quite clear. She said that her sermons tend to last from eight to ten minutes. <laughs> she said that the congregation is very appreciative of her commitment to brevity. <laughs> and she specifically said that some of you asked her to make sure that I know that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to do my very best to keep my sermons at eight to ten minutes. Although I did also remember long ago hearing a sermon by a pastor who began his sermon saying, I'd really be surprised if I go more than 45 minutes today, but I've been surprising myself a lot lately. <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry. My sermons are often much closer to 10 minutes than 45 minutes. I'm also excited to be with you during the season of Epiphany. You know, uh, it, it, these are these Sundays after the day of Epiphany. Epiphany is one of my favorite words. It, it, it's a Greek word, actually, and the Greek word is epiphanos, and it means to shed light upon. And so Epiphany is this time in the church here, where we take six Sundays to shed light upon who Jesus is and how Jesus reveals God to us. And I think it's an extraordinary season. And this message of the light of epiphany that we know in Jesus that shines on us and shines through us to the world is a powerful, a powerful symbol for what it means to be the Christian church today. You, you may have been surprised that we turn our attention now back to John the Baptist who is very much a part of our Advent preparations, right? He's one of the key characters of the Advent season. And as Alyssa shared with the kids, one of the, one of the primary things we learn about John in December is that John's a baptizer. And he's trying to help people to discover their need for forgiveness and their need for a Savior. But in Epiphany, we begin to see John from a different perspective. Because in the fourth gospel, the gospel written by another person named John, John the baptizer is really less a baptizer and more a witness, a witness to the one who's coming, a witness to the light, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that is Christ, a witness to the light of God that shines through Christ. You might remember these very beautiful words that begin our fourth gospel. John writes, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. And so over and over and over again, John makes this, uh, this act of shedding light on Jesus and how Jesus reveals God to us, the very center of his ministry. He didn't come to convince people to confess their sins more. He didn't come to establish a bunch of new rules and regulations for God's people. He didn't come to set everything right that had gone astray since Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. But he came to offer a witness to the one who is coming. The one who was coming and who then would begin to shed new light on how God is present in our world. The interesting thing about John's ministry is he didn't end there. But instead what he also did is he commended to his listeners and his followers to take on that same mission of sharing the light of God with the world around him. We see that in this morning's gospel, don't we? Because one of the first people that John introduces to Jesus is a man named Andrew who has a very famous brother. And when Andrew sees in Jesus what John sees in Jesus and begins to follow him, the first thing that Andrew does is he goes and he finds his brother and he announces to him that we have found in Jesus of Nazareth the Messiah, the one whom God is sending to reveal new things to us about this life of faith and love and grace. It's a powerful indication of what it truly means to be a follower of John. And for Andrew, what it meant to be a follower of John was to leave John <laughs> and begin to follow the one to whom John had been pointing them. Th this desire to follow Jesus and to share Jesus lay at the very heart of the early Christian church. And it really has continued to be at the heart of every faithful and strong worshiping community. And the question for us uh, as faithful followers today is how is it that we continue that ministry of John 
by seeing what Jesus reveals to us about God and by allowing that to shine through our lives every day. It seems like a very complicated thing, but in fact, it's actually quite simple. You know, we follow John's ministry as we, as we uh, engage in acts of random love and kindness, right? We follow John's ministry as we welcome the stranger fully and warmly into our midst. We follow John when we reach out to someone who's in need and offer our support and encouragement to them. We follow John when we stand up for what's true and right in this world. We follow John when when we share our delight in this congregation with someone we know and commend it to them as something that could be a blessing in their lives as it is in our lives. Uh, we share this, uh, we continue the ministry of John when we realize that the faith that God has given to us raises up within us a well of hope that gives us faith and direction and purpose and meaning in our lives. Over and over and over again, John is one who continues to, to shed light on who Jesus is and how Jesus reveals to us what God wants us to know. And, and that continues to be our mission today. Our mission as we encourage one another in faith. Our mission as we share Christ with the world around us. Our mission as we continue to build and strengthen the life of this congregation. Well, I don't know how many of you have stopwatches going, so I know the time is running. I better get finished up here. Uh, But maybe we'll end with this one prayer, that, that my words and your thoughts might be acceptable to our God, who is rock and redeemer, and who calls us in this life of joining John and making witness to the world of the Christ who unites us. Amen. Please rise and body your spirit for our song of the day, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, as we sing holy, 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 open the eyes of my heart, someone leading us in the prayer? I'll do it, yeah. Okay. (laughs) I'll catch on to these things in time. (laughs) Let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, we pray for the church around the world. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Strengthen our partnerships in faith. Be with our bishops Elizabeth and Jim and our ministry partners in Castle Rock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Creator God, the waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in Jesus you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. 
Fill governing bodies with righteousness and equip judges with discernment and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty, and to all those in this community who need your care. We, we especially pray for Jim as he recovers from back surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Mighty God, you are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, in every place and time, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Also remember in my prayers this morning, your former pastor, Julie, who last night was installed as pastor of Abiding Hope, and we ask for God's blessing on her new ministry and for the transition in this congregation. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We greet one another in the name of Christ. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. I do the fist bumps during the peace. <laughs> God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. I always do this during the sharing of the peace. Nice to meet you, Carol. Hello, sir. God's peace. <laughs> God's peace. Do you know what that is? Do you use that before? Do you have those communions? <laughs> God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> I always do that during the sharing of the peace. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello there. God's peace to you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, God's peace. Thank you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. I invite the congregation to be seated as we receive this morning's offering. We want to thank you for your generosity, which keeps this congregation strong, and we invite our online viewers to join us by visiting the Well of Hope website and making your contributions there. Let us give of ourselves to the ministry of Christ. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you, if you are able, to stand with us as we celebrate this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said to them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As the Apostle Paul would remind us that each time that we eat this bread and drink this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray together in the kingdom prayer that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And every time we eat this meal, we remember that the gifts of God are free. Please be seated. If you're joining us for online worship today and you've prepared bread and wine for your uh, communion, we invite you to receive that now. As you take the bread, we will share with you these words, the body of Christ given for you, and with the wine, the blood of Christ is shed for you. The congregation is invited to come and receive. We have communion kits here that you can take. There is juice in this container. If you would prefer juice, please come as you are ready and receive the presence of Christ in this meal. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you. You are forever in God's grace. Amen. Should I do the prayer? <laughs> oh, <is> it? <laughs> Holy oh, one. It says me up there and it says you on my bullet. My <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll do it. <laughs> we could flip a coin. <laughs> Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Let us love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. Thank you, Lexi. And now let's bow our hearts to God and receive these words of benediction. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faith heart, faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, abiding in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Please rise and body your spirit for our sending song, I Will Follow. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good. All your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone. High at my side, high above my life. I will trust in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Whom you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Into the world, light into my life. I will live for you. All I need in you alone, in you alone. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I move. I will follow you. Who you love, I love. How you serve, I serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. I will follow you, when you love, I love, how you serve, I serve, if this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you. Hey, why don't you join? Let's thank Lexi for leading us in worship this morning. Thanks, Lexi. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.